You think we saw it all? I didn't think so. So in this video we're gonna be diving deep into rabbit hole and seeing what kind of more of indie content we can uncover and see furthermore. Let's go. What is happening to the studios we loved? How can mm. they make some of the greatest games of all time then turn around and just make disappointment after disappointment? It felt Ooh. like the end of AAA games, but then Elden Ring came out. <laughs> Haven't played it yet. Why is Elden Ring such a breath of fresh air when most mm. other AAA games feel copy pasted? And why did this game cause so much controversy? Elden Ring is game of the year? The game is You <laughs> Man. To answer what? these questions, we first need to understand that when Elden Ring came out, the game defied everyone's expectation. Elden Ring sold 12 million copies in the first two weeks. Wow. Even Miyazaki, the mastermind behind Elden Ring, was surprised by the success. And to put the... $60? Wait, wait, wait. $60... Divide, multiplied by 12 million? That's a lot. A lot of cash. Okay sales into context, Elden Ring at release was on pace to sell the same amount of copies as some of the best selling open world games of the last decade. GTA 5, Skyrim, and Breath of the Wild. I mean, if you really think about it, okay. Elden Ring should not have been performing as well as these other games. Don't get me wrong, Elden mm -hmm. Ring is an incredible game, but most FromSoft games are pretty niche and usually target a more hardcore and advanced player base. Yeah. By nature, FromSoft games shouldn't sell as much as Zelda or GTA. But this time, Elden Ring did. Why? What was different about Elden Ring and what set it apart from other FromSoft games? The answer? Nothing really. Yes, Elden Ring. Huh? Ring was open world, so unlike other Souls games, you could avoid certain bosses and areas. Yes, the lore was some of the best I'd ever seen in the game. The world was so immersive that I don't think I could ever find everything in the mysterious world of the Lands Between. Seriously, Elden Ring is a masterpiece. Go play this game. But I Okay, I'm, I'm gonna try playing out this game. But uh, before doing that, I want to ask you for a like, share, and subscribe of this video. And let's just go. I think there's more to come, right? would argue that almost every FromSoft game is a masterpiece too. And just like the other Souls games, Elden Ring still targets a hardcore player base, and the gameplay is still punishing as hell. So why then is Elden Ring capturing a much larger chunk of the gaming market? There is a huge demand for high quality AAA games, and not much mm -hmm. of a supply. I mean, yeah. imagine you're at a restaurant, and you have a hankering for some steak but they're out of stock. All they have left is some burnt scraps of cooked steak they can shovel onto a plate, mm. or you burnt can get scraps. a delicious honey-baked ham with a sweet honey drizzle. So although you wanted a steak, you choose the honey-baked ham because the steak scraps just aren't edible. This is the AAA game mm. market we are in right now. Urban Millions of gamers up. looking at the piss poor options, praying to Gabe, the god of Steam, to give them anything fun and exciting. <laughs> it doesn't matter what genre, as long as it's good. Just give us something edible and satisfying. So when Elden Ring came out and the world saw how amazing this game was, people who were originally intimidated by Souls games looked at Elden Ring and said, screw it. Let's try it out. I got nothing else to play. So yeah. like the guy choosing the ham over the burnt steak, I would argue that Elden Ring's meteoric success is not only a byproduct of how good the game is, but because there's such a small supply of good AAA titles right now. I can tell that I tried the original playing uh, Dark Souls, the first part, but I even failed completing that very, very original, well, the tutorial phase. So I'm not sure. If you want me to try out the Souls games, uh, let me know down in the comments and uh, I see what I can do. Elden Ring really is the best option that was on the horrible. Menu. However, like every industry, there will be people who hate or love something purely because of its popularity. And man, do we have That's a wrong. few in the gaming industry. But what's surprising this time, many of the people who hate Elden Ring are developers at other studios, infuriated by Elden Ring's success. Same developer who said, Elden Ring's UX is so bad that I can only imagine FromSoft's devs smoking at their desks and using CRT monitors. I guess these developers okay. felt that the game violated certain tenets of game development, and by violating these rules of development, Elden Ring didn't deserve its success. Why would these devs be so angry about Elden Ring's success? Who cares if Elden Ring didn't follow the rules of game yeah, development? It's not exactly. like Elden Ring's success affects them. 
Well, mostly. I can see why developers at Guerrilla Games were upset. Elden Ring released only one week after Horizon Forbidden West, so you could say that Elden Ring overshadowed the hype around Horizon. So Horizon possibly didn't perform as expected. The reason is petty and in no way Elden Ring's fault, but at least I can see where the Guerrilla Dev's frustration comes from. But why were you... I don't know. I personally, I tried playing Horizon Zero Dawn. I was recommended the game from my friend and I think I played it for like 20 or 30 hours but afterwards just the game didn't feel right it was just missing some sort of a emotion to it I don't know if I have played a lot of titles but uh, Horizon Zero Dawn even though expectations was high and the release on PC was um, anticipated by me by recommendation of my friend uh, who played the game on PC but the game didn't live up to expectations and now seeing part 2 and again seeing the news that there's gonna be um, Horizon Zero Dawn's Dawn uh, MMORPG I don't know, I no longer believe in studios and I didn't really see uh, AAA studios pulling off the, the weight and living up to expectations so I don't know, I don't really trust the hype around that game anymore what about you? Ubisoft devs so upset. None of their sales were affected by the release of Elden Ring. Now, remember, these were only a few people and not the whole studio who were angry at Elden Ring. However, the response from gamers to not only these devs, but Ubisoft as a whole showed us something hmm. really interesting. Gamers are tired of playing the same thing. We are tired of the formulaic. I never got the idea of playing Assassin's Creed. Sorry. I tried one of the games. Aesthetic looks good, but the gameplay it's just I, I'm nature sorry. of ubisoft and most other AAA spread games. hatred sure yeah it has a satisfying shooter looter game loop the graphics are great the mechanics are well tuned and executed and the story is acceptable bummer yeah it's exactly the same as all other ubisoft games it's just another copy paste you see when every user <laughs> interface every store and every game looks relatively the same we notice it's like hotel art each piece of art is theoretically different, but somehow feels and functions exactly the same. So when the first okay. few Assassin's Creed games came out, they felt new and exciting. Running around the Holy True. Land of Rome, leaping off buildings, sneaking or hiding in hay bales, and it graphics. was unique. But now I can barely tell the difference between Assassin's Creed gameplay and every other Ubisoft game. Yeah, I remember I tried Watch Dogs, I tried Assassin's Creed and it really resembles so much of GTA V. I just couldn't bear to play those games. Ubisoft thinks if they just change the era and location of each game, we won't notice. I mean, one has knives and one has guns, right? But just like hotel art, they may look different, they don't feel any different. Yeah. It's the same game with a new coat of paint. This reason is why Ubisoft devs reacted the way they did. They have been taught that to make a successful game, you need to follow a formula. So when a studio like FromSoft makes Elden Ring without the formula and it's incredibly successful, it infuriates developers who have had their creativity restricted and pushed into a box. Now, these devs who criticize FromSoft should take full responsibility for what they said wow. in public form. However, I also blame AAA studios like Ubisoft for forcing their teams to create unimaginative copycats of their previous 10 games. We can get mad at a few devs all we want, but the real problem comes from the Ubisoft's executives choosing to be formulaic. But why yeah. are the leaders of Ubisoft and other AAA studios hell-bent on producing the same type of game? Why force your... Before going further, I, I believe they have just found the thing that it works for them and the moment they see decline in sales, then they're gonna start pivoting. But before that happens, I'm pretty sure and the video gonna tell you about this. They're just gonna continue milking the same cow up until the kind dries out. Basically, the whales swim away and the majority of player base have start having different expectations of what game supposed to be. I, I believe that's going to happen. Devs to work on the 100th Assassin's Creed when they want to work on something new and exciting. The answer, stability and money. This may be obvious to everyone, but milking an IP over and over again is the easiest way to make money as an entertainment company. It's the reason yeah. why we've had a new Call of Duty 19 years in a row and also why 2022's top 20 best-selling games are all existing IP or sequels, except for Elden Ring. Seriously, look at this. Elden Ring is the only game on here that is a okay. new IP. 
What's even more crazy about this list is that two of the top 20 games were Call of Duty games and three of them were sports sequels, which are notorious for being the exact same as their predecessor. We can complain about these games being sold as copies. I think the guys who started, the EA guys who started making the sports games, they are milking it so, so good. Like all of the player base is just buying each year new game or each season, I don't really know how it works, but it just, a little bit of graphics tweaks, different skins for different uh, teams that are playing, and, and that's about it. It's uh, it's it's crazy. It I would personally think they could just create one game, have a, have it awesome, and then that's it. Just improve it over time. Why you have to release new version? Copycats all we want, but we're the ones buying these soulless games in yeah. droves. And for companies to come up with brand new games and IP is risky. So studios will make sequels for as long as possible if we keep buying them. So I don't ever see studios not making sequels when we buy them year after year. True. That said, there is a negative effect on your brand when you don't release something new or innovative. Think about it. What is one of your favorite games? Remember when that game was released and how you felt about the developer of that game. Pretty good, mm -hmm. right? Then yeah. think about that specific developer's most recent games. How do those new games compare with your favorite game? And how do you feel about that developer now? Probably not great. For me, it was Blizzard and Warcraft 3. This game made Blizzard my favorite developer, and I wouldn't allow a bad word to be said about them. But now, Blizzard has released cash grab after cash grab, not to mention everything else they have done. And I can't help but look at Blizzard with disappointment. A bad game happens sometimes, but Blizzard hasn't made a good game since 2016 with Overwatch. Not to mention they somehow butchered Warcraft 3 with the release of Reforged. I just can't imagine defending Blizzard anymore. The Blizzard brand has fallen from one of the greatest video game developers True. to a company that is compared to EA. But as we saw with Blizzard yeah. in the beginning, wow. the opposite occurs when you release something new. Yeah, Blizzard with a scandal of, of, of female working employees, um, combining with Activision, then Bobby milking the games, and the games being released uh, highly monetized and in a weak, weak delivery. Even like, I just saw the Twitter feed, there was a Diablo 2 uh, Reforge update. I believe it's 2.6 if, if I have good memory. And I read through the patch notes. And a thing that struck me is that they're just improving the balance of the characters, for example, in Diablo 2. But they're not changing the game. And it's just same maps, same monsters, same, same things. It's just they're just changing percentages on, on on the skills, how skills impact the damage, and they're just uh, leveling up the monsters. But they're not adding any sort of new areas. They're not trying anything new so they would attract new players. They're just, I don't know. They're just making addictive the game more addictive by just so little tweaks. It's, it's, just, it's just sad. That just blows people away like Elden Ring. Gamers will have your back even if the game isn't perfect. I mean, look at one of the biggest controversies on YouTube, featuring the Act Man and Quantum TV. This guy made a video saying like Elden Ring sucks or something, and he hates everyone that plays Elden Ring. So Act Man made a video about like the worst take in Elden Ring. The drama from these Elden Ring videos escalated to way more controversial stuff, like bigotry, copyright, demonetization, and the Act Man trending as the number one story on Twitter. But all this stemmed from arguments about Elden Ring. Why? because FromSoft had gained some huge brownie points for releasing pure art. And like any extravagant piece of art, people will have <coughs> visceral reactions, both positive and negative, which is also why people get so angry when you change the story and lore of video games with TV shows like Halo or The Witcher. I mean, Witcher 3 was a beloved game. Exactly, I love the Witcher 3 game, but before this video unveils, my personal take on, on the series of Witcher, after watching a couple of episodes, I was neglecting on watching the third and fourth, but after I did, I stopped watching the series because just copy-paste of the same stuff. And a piece of art to so many people, not to mention the comics. So when you mess up the story and lore in the show, the community isn't toxic when they react negatively. They are passionately asking for you to respect that piece of art as they do. 
Now, all this said, I don't just want to bash on AAA studios and walk away. True, constructive criticism should have ideas for improvement, not just ranting. So if I had the opportunity to consult a AAA studio, I would suggest the Pareto principle to be applied company-wide. This principle, also known as the 80-20 rule, is the observation that roughly 80% of consequences hmm. come from 20% of causes. One company effectively applying this technique is Google. During my time at Google, I saw how they allowed their employees to spend 20% of their time working on something the individual thought would most benefit the company. Both Gmail okay. and AdSense came from this practice, and the former made Google more than $54 billion just in 2022. A more applicable example is Fortnite. Okay. The original Fortnite concept was developed from an internal game jam put on by Epic Games. Although they don't strictly follow the 80-20 rule, a game jam is just one example of its application letting your team take time to work on new and innovative ideas. Just pure creativity with no deadlines. And creativity is the key to a company's longevity. You need to constantly innovate to stay wow, alive. And it's that. what the AAA industry desperately needs right now. So how can we get more games like Elden Ring? AAA studios need to allocate 20% of all their resources to working on new and innovative games. No deadlines, no parameters, just pure creativity. Let your developers work part-time on something they are passionate about and be amazed at what they'll create. I'm not saying stop making sequels. As we saw, AAA studios make a lot of money from sequels. Yeah. And sequels aren't always a bad thing. I'm stoked for a Hollow Knight 2 and I pray for a Warcraft 4. However, for AAA studios to be profitable while garnering the love and support of the gaming community, AAA studios should look at Elden Ring as an example to stop making formula. To be honest, the game looks amazing. Play games while applying Pareto's principle to let their developers conceptualize and build masterpieces we all will appreciate, like Elden Ring. Hey, thanks to everyone who joined our Discord and submitted their favorite indie games know. for this week's video. This the indie video? game our community voted as their favorite think, for this video um, was Inmost, made by Hidden Layer. I think this video has its points, and one of the things that it it, it successfully mentions is that uh, the AAA game studios is just uh, failing to meet the standards. But when it comes to Pareto rule, I don't really think that's true. Giving people uh, ability to work on anything that, that they wish it's a, it's a good idea but um, like I don't know, I have so much ideas in my head that where things could go wrong and things could fall apart easily because you allow people to do too much or there's no uh, no no management or control over what people strive to do as I would think a simply developer who is uh, in the company working for the company using company's tool could just simply make the game on his own and why, why stick with the company? And I don't know, the parade rule, I think it, it, I would reverse it a bit where, I don't know. I, I don't really know how to use it correctly, but I think it's good to have a creativity. It's good to have like, not a 80% impact, but more of um, you do 80% of your normal expected content, like sequels, but 20% you're experimenting with stuff that you're not too sure if a fan base is gonna like it. And I don't mean like you cutting down the content and parts of the content so that it would be less and less and less so you could profit more, but like more content, for example. Why not you add like uh, progression? Everyone li likes progression. What if you could make a game that would have all sorts of awesome skins? And for example, like uh, Call of Duty again, right? only awesome skins there would not be any of the low quality skins in the game what happens then cosmetics game becomes broken maybe this game becomes famous for such things and of course it's a huge investment and no one's sure if it's gonna be a good payoff but it's a gamble it's part of the 20 percent that you can invest into pure gamble and you're not sure if it's gonna pay off but if you're gonna be following the guidebook and following up the rules it's uh it's gonna be a shitty game at the end and i think we we've seen a lot of those games in the next video i'm gonna be looking at uh, what kind of indie titles there there is if you want to see that video i think i'm gonna be placing it uh, somewhere on the top here and if it's not out it's not out but it should be out so thank you for watching guys and see you in the next one
Peace.